Get them shackles off him. Poor sod can't eat proper. Dunno, not sure I like that. What if he runs for it? He's worth a heap of coin. Ah, bollocks. Been all in him a week, hasn't tried a thing. Why are you up and bold now? Matter of fact, got to thinking. What did a sweet, gentle chap like him do to get the Queen of Zericania so riled? She's a shrew, that's a Queen and witch in one. <laughs> Worst of both worlds. Look about her. What do you say to one more of your tiles? While well, we toss down some cards. Ah, why not? And since you mentioned one queen... Hey guys, this is Hojo, and welcome back to Serial Gaming, and this is Thronebreaker. And if you haven't got a chance to play The Witcher 3, you absolutely should. It's probably on sale somewhere. And uh, I really think it's a good one to play, and if you get a chance when you're playing The Witcher 3, play Gwent, because it's one of the best card games out there. And um, this is a spin-off from that, because it did so well. Um, just to kind of give you a recap of what Gwent was in Witcher 3, it was kind of like... It's kind of like Hearthstone and uh, Magic the Gathering, but a little different. So there's three separate um, three separate tiles. There's one for like close range battle, mid range battle, and like a like a far like catapult kind of range. And the goal of the game is to win two out of three rounds. And instead of attacking the other cards, you're trying to win each round by having the most points. And um, so it's kind of cool. It kind of takes advantage of like playing the computer because they're not the smartest. But uh, what was really cool and fun about that game was going from town to town and collecting all the really powerful cards and uh, learning how to use them in the best way possible. So a game was really fun. It took off. It had a cult following and actually kind of spun off a few things like some board games, um, some limited edition cards that came out. And then uh, about a year and a half ago, they released um, Gwent, but it was like in beta. And what's interesting about that is when it released, it was very different than the game we're going to play today. Uh, that Gwent game that came out was actually kind of more in line with like Hearthstone or um, one of those type of games where if you've ever played a card collecting game like that, you battle people online and then you systematically get more cards or you lose and... A lot of times the, the balance in those games are hard, uh, so like there's certain decks that'll win out and there's certain decks that you just really can't use and um, CD Projekt Red, if you haven't played one of their games, they're one of the few developers that will take their time in making what they want. So what's really awesome about CD Projekt Red is that they won't release something unless it's really good and something that they're proud of. So when they got to releasing the beta about a year and a half ago, uh, it got met with a lot of criticism. And so they took that to heart and actually pulled the game. Um, they left the beta out so people could still play. But what they did is they revamped it and they wanted to have the spirit of the Witcher. Uh, and what that means is they want to be able to have a card game that also has an amazing story and really pulls you into the world of the Witcher. So what we're going to play today is Thronebreaker. And this has been about a year and a half in the making. Uh, I don't know much about it. I do know that it follows kind of sort of like the Witcher Tales, we get to experience a lot of the locales of that area. Um, there's going to be unique battles, and the system's going to be a little different than Gwent uh, that came out in the game, or even the one that came out for the beta. So um, it's going to be fully voiced, we're going to have a lot of fun, and if you think you might like this, uh, definitely check it out. It's They do not make bad stuff, and this is one of my all-time favorites uh, in The Witcher, and I'm actually really excited to play this. I've been waiting almost three years for this game. So. With all that out of the way, let's play a new game. Alright, difficulty. Adventurer, Battle Hardened, and Bonebreaker? Okay, uh, for players familiar with Gwent and ready to put their skills to the test, uh, it's been a while since I played. Players seeking a moderate challenge, an impactful story, or people who just want to sit back. Oh, we'll do Battle Hardened. That's like the normal mode, right? Here we go. The year 1267. War hung in the air, its scent palpable. The mighty empire of Nilfgaard stood poised, 
greedily eyeing the northern realms just across the Yaruga. In light of the threat, the realm sovereigns met in summit. They made declarations, pledged fraternal assistance, forged alliances, and then, in good spirits, dispersed. Among them, Meave, queen of the twin realms Lyria and Rivia. Know the name? Hmm? Heard her beauty extolled? Justly so remarkable she was, not for her graceful exterior, but for her persistence and courage. Where was I? Ah, as the queen and her retinue neared her capital, Count Caldwell appeared. In Meave's absence, the Count was to have helped her son, the youthful Prince Willem, run the Twin Kingdoms. Caldwell had clearly ridden hard. Drops of perspiration dangled from his whiskers, his neck red and chafed from a rough, starched stiff. Okay. I can't <laughs> I can't tell which one's a storyteller. I'm guessing it's gonna be the guy, right? Chan? Right, Yon? Uh that's the queen, I guess that's like her second in command. Alright. Hail, your majesty. Delighted to see you in good health. The summit it ended fruitfully, I hope. <laughs> Just kidding. I guess the storyteller isn't actually here. So this is Caldwell, I guess? Uh, I don't know who he is. Yes, at its end, letters were exchanged, documents signed, paper. Time will tell of what value. Mm-hmm. That will suffice as cordialities go, Caldwell. Tell me what's happened, for I sincerely doubt she a longing prompted you to ride out. Cordialities? It... I guess that's how you say it. <laughs> Indeed, Your Grace. Another circumstance inspired me to do so. <clears throat> the strays of Sparla, the bandits, I was attend to during your grace's absence. Uh, the situation's gotten out of hand, I fear. Uh-huh, let me guess. And we have to go help him? Oh, okay. So, just like in The Witcher, uh, you always have choices. And your choices have actions. And what's amazing about The Witcher is... You don't know what your actions are going to do. So, perfect example. In The Witcher 3, you ride into this little town of... Um, this little tiny village in the very beginning of the game. And I think it's called White Orchard. And long story short, there's a blacksmith there. And he had his home burnt down. And so, you tell him that you'll help him out. And in turn, he'll pay you some money. Because The Witchers don't work for free. So, long story short, we do this little thing and we like find out who the person was that did it. And it was this guy who hated dwarves, basically. He hated dwarves. He was drunk, he did it, and you had an option. You could either let this guy go and tell the blacksmith that you had no idea who did this, or you could do what you think is the right thing and take this kid over to, you know, this blacksmith so he can apologize. So, you know, of course you're like, oh, well, this is a simple solution. We'll just go ahead and take him over there and the blacksmith will scold him or whatever. False. False. He calls the guards over and they hang him. They hang him. So, much like The Witcher, this game is going to be very tricky and we're not going to know which one to do. So, um, we're just going to play it the way we think it's going to go and we'll just see what happens. All right, so Caldwell's asking for our help and he's a scare baby and we're going to say... Hmm. Settle down. Steady, Caldwell. Come now. Deep breath. Yeah, dude, you're gonna have a heart attack. All right. Speak. <laughs> what has happened? Be precise. As your grace ordained, I set out and was nipping at the bandits' tails for long. We pursued for weeks, until scouts returned, having sighted the strays' camp in the forest near Lockeran. We waited for nightfall to surprise them as they slept, Alas, it proved a ruse. We found the tents empty. Straw stuffed dummies around the fire. Soon, we learned that as we waited for the sunset, the strays had snuck away, rounded our positions and ridden to Hawksburn. Mmm, gave old Caldwell the slip. I beg your pardon, my lord. The tax collectors. That is where they station. So the gold? All of it? Oh, <laughs> you done fucked up, Caldwell. Uh, it's stolen, Your Grace. But I shall do all in my power to recover it. This I vow, if it be Your Grace's wish. 
After weeks in the saddle, your grace's wishes are modest. A hot bath and a night's sleep in her own bed. Yet, they shall have to wait. I must look personally to this matter. Your force, Coldwell, I will now command. You, send a herald to Hawksburn. They must prepare for the Queen's arrival. Air the rooms, dust off the porcelain. Make certain they do it. Yeah, they better dust off all that porcelain. Whatever that means. Do you see now, Reynard? I believe I foretold it would be thus. My son wasn't ready in the least to rule an entire country. I confess, Prince Willem has much to learn yet. Hmm, yes. And very little time. Alright, welcome to Thornbreaker Tutorial. Before embarking on your adventure, you should get acquainted with the basic mechanics. Yeah, so this is not what the Witcher looks like, but this is an awesome representation. Um, this is really cool. I'm so, so excited about this. You can control the character using the left clicky thing. Follow the cobblestone road to reach the next stage of your journey. Oh, so, okay, so we can like click and move them. What if we just hold it down? Oh, and they'll start walking? Oh, cool. Okay, awesome. Uh, I'm going to treat it like a point and click adventure. <laughs> can I collect that? No. Can I go up here? No. Can I go over here? Alright, I'm going to assume that something's going to like pop out at me if I can click on it. You will expand your army throughout the game, but to do so, you must collect the following types of gold. <laughs> gold. <laughs> Resources. Gold, wool, wood, and recruits. Oh, up here. Gold, wood, recruits. Got it. While on the road, you can find useful items and even new companions who will support you in battle. battle. Um, if you don't want to miss anything, be sure to thoroughly explore the map. Okay, so... Alright, so we need wood. So I can click on little stumps, I guess? Uh, okay, I got it. Oh yeah, there we go. Um, oh, uh, okay, cool. So you right-click and hold it. Okay, so left is movement, and then right is, like, to interact. Oh, thought it were bandits riding in. Nope, just me. Just me riding in. Uh, what? And that's how you recruit an army, by rolling up a flag. Okay. Okay, so anything that we can interact with is going to have like a little hand to hickey. So I guess that's kind of what we're looking for. I don't think there'd be like secrets anywhere else. Alright, let's go ahead and talk to this lady down here and see what she's got going on. Milk, they stretched her over a fire. Till she told him where she buried her gold. Huh. Okay. So. Ooh, there's more wood over here. Hang on. Right here. Yeah, give me that gold and stuff and things. I feel like we should be able to talk to this guy. But I guess we can't. Um, how do I get down in here? Oh, is this little pathway down here? Can you... Huh. Yeah, hmm. I guess we can't go that way. Huh. Alright, well, well, come back later, I guess. An obstacle blocks your path. To remove it, you need to spend some of your resources. Okay. Your Majesty! It seems someone felled an old oak, which now blocks the road. Unfortunately, our wagons can't go around it. Oh, so even though we're controlling her, we're technically, like, moving the army. How do you wish to proceed? Have the loggers sort the matter and conserve their strain. So it's going to cost us money. Or issue access to soldiers and put them to work. Uh, I don't know. What's more important? Uh, money or people? I think people are more important. Let's do that. Okay.
Most interactive objects are marked clearly on your map, but not all. Some events can be predicted, oh, cannot be predicted, so do your best to be prepared for anything. Count Caldwell rode at the column's head, scanning its flanks with a wary eye that, despite his advanced age, proved very sharp indeed. Your Majesty! Bandits! There! At the tree line! The Count's footmen, unaccustomed to escorting their queen, sought to shield her with their bodies and assumed a tight formation to do so. They were promptly knocked aside as Meade charged headlong at the bandits, brandishing her blade and bellowing a ferocious cry. Attack! Charge! Nice. Oh, our first battle. Yeah. Oh, look at those pig people. All right. M Mev? Meave? Was convinced the bandits would flee to the cover of the forest upon realizing their grave mistake. After all, no ordinary bandit would dare attack the re retinue? Question mark? Of the queen? Yet the strays of Spala were on a different breed. They were a different breed. Uh, sto custom deck? A key battle in the store. Unique cards may, be a may appear in the hand or deck. Oh, okay, so this is kind of like telling you what you might get. Awesome. And then I guess this is kind of a picture of who we're battling. Let's do this! Oh, cool. Okay, so this is the battlefield. You play your cards on the bottom half, and your opponent plays on the top. Yeah, so something a little different than in Gwent is there's only two rows here, not three. So that's a little different. Uh, I, I'm guessing it helps to streamline the battles. battles. Um, and this is our bad guy here, and our good, awesome queen here. Units can be played on one of two rows, the melee, which is the first one, and the range. But remember, the abilities of some cards may be different depending on the row that you play them. Yeah, so um, depending on what these cards are, we have to put them in the right spot. A standard battle can last up to three rounds. The first to win two rounds wins the whole match. That kind of makes sense. Players alternate turns which that's normal. They play one card, but um, you can use any number of abilities. The player who goes first in the match is the same who initiated the battle. In this case, you encountered an ambush, so your opponent starts the match. So we... Bigger they are, easier they are to target. To attack the queen, an outrage! Uh, the army strength of each unit plays... Okay, so total strength. The player whose army has the most strength points at the end of the round will win that round. Some units have armor. Okay, so this guy has armor. So he's got like five, but he has armor of three. It absorbs a certain amount of damage dealt to the unit. Your Grace, the men await. You must lead to begin the attack. Uh, most cards have an ability of some kind. To learn about it, select the card and read it in its short description. Additional information will appear if you right-click the card. Okay. Yeah, I know I got that. I don't want to play a card yet, I want to read this thing. Cool. Alright, so Stray Slingers, move one unit to the row opposite of this unit and damage them by one. Hmm. He moves one unit to the row opposite. Huh. Okay. Alright, we definitely don't want to use the count, he's way too strong. Um, it kind of makes sense that we're going to lead with this guy. Damage an enemy by the number of cards on the row. Oh. Damage an enemy by the number of cards on this row. Reach two. Boost self by five. Okay, well, let's just try... Putting that there. Oh, cool. Alright, so his ability allows us to deal damage equal to the number of cards on the row where he is played. Oh, I should I need to put... I should have put him down second. That's okay. His ability is activated the moment he's played. Cool, so we got an end one. Alright, so right now, they've got a two, and we've got a five. Okay, whenever an enemy takes damage, boost self by one. So I think what they want us to do is attack this guy, and he'll get stronger. Um, hmm. Boost an ally by four and give it armor of one. Interesting. All right. Well, let's just put that here. As a tighter result of the earth, they are your grace. They follow you into fire. You need simply say the word. 
The Scythe Man has the ability, the loyal ability. This means that the other abilities are activated every time he sees his abilities. Oh. Each leader has their own unique ability to learn what it is. Yeah, we've already done that. Yeah, we can boost it and add armor. I shall teach you to respect the crown, you dogs! <laughs> oh, snap. Oh, and he got that plus five. Okay, that was definitely the right move. So we boosted him by four, and then when we activate her skills, his skills activate. So that is a beast of a character. They're going to go ahead and forfeit. Look out! Seek cover! <gasps> we are bombarded! Dang. Okay, see so your cards, opponent abilities, blah, blah, blah. be sure to read descriptions, yada, yada, yada. Oh, move one unit to the opposite row of this unit damaged by them. So he hit us here, we move back. Play a copy of each adjacent, 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 adjacent unit from your deck. A lesson in humility coming now. Okay, so he allow it allows him to summon from the deck copies of the cards. So when you lay that guy down, he'll pull out all the copies of the people that are adjacent to him. That's awesome. I one gold. Oh snap! This snap! <laughs> Yes! Our victory is assured! Sound the horns! May they sing praises of this triumph for ages! When you've played all your cards, the, the in turn button will turn into a pass button. When you pass, you'll not be able to perform another action. Yeah, so if you basically have all the cards out that you want for that round, you say, hey, I'm done, you just go to pass. The battle's not yet done. It's better to conserve oh. our strength. Prepare for a strike that will prove decisive. Interesting. So, at the beginning of the second and third rounds, each player draws three cards from the Battle deck. Formation. Protect the queen. Okay, the player. Uh, okay. So this must be a situation where we're only playing three cards and we're done. So we probably want to play. We probably want to play this guy first to here. Ah, should have listened to me, old lady. And then... In turn. Hey. And I guess we'll play... Uh... That guy? This artist will be reaping black clad hands. And then... That? Oh yeah, girl. What's up? Couldn't end that turn. We'll catch them all. <laughs> all right, you Pokemon. All right, cool. So damage an enemy by the number of cards in the row. So we're gonna have two cards here. So if we can put him down here, give me a time. Ah, uh, we can hit them for three, maybe or two, three. Yeah, awesome. All right, we'll go ahead and pass. We did all the damage we could. Ever have a storm knock out one of your teeth? All right, you've won two rounds in a row, which means you're the victor. I congratulate you on your latest victory, Your Grace. The bandit stood not a chance. <laughs> yes, yeah, like the equivalent of a guy coming up to mug you with like a water balloon, and you just pull out a gun. <clears throat> Matters seem indeed to have gotten out of hand. To put it mildly. Meave said, arms crossed atop her shining breastplate. They've grown bold. Doubtless after the raid on the manor, the tax collectors. I've not heard of an ambush on the high road of foe. Caldwell explained, avoiding his liege's wrathful gaze. Enough, Caldwell. We must put things right. Come. The Queen's retinue set out, cavalry in front, infantry and arbalists close behind, and following in the rear... The bandits bound in chains. <laughs> oh man, got him. Oh cool, I guess it's like the loot. Oh yeah, what's up? Look at all these dead people. 
crush them. Give me all that loot. Loot, loot! All aboard the loot train, everybody. Ah, uh, I do adore this prospect. Yes. Lyria, the Pearl of the North. With its hills and dales. Why, its beauty matched only by that of its queen. After three weeks in the saddle... Yeah, he's a kiss-ass. I've my doubts, Count. We shall pitch camp here. Our soldiers need respite. A spell of it they deserve. Alright, to survey your army, you must first pitch camp. Alright, well that's kind of good. Let's go ahead and do that, I guess. Ah, okay. So up here we can press this and we can create the tent. Camp buildings allow you to expand your army and give access to important information. Uh, most camp buildings can be improved in your workshop, which I guess is here. Uh, they give you access to stronger units and easing your journey down the line. Enter the workshop. Uh, okay. Alright, so we can build camp. Oh, cool. Alright, so I think this is going to be like the RPG elements of the game. Like, so when we, we rest, we're going to be able to like upgrade stuff and get more things and improve. Alright, so we need wood and gold. And... Okay. Upgrade the royal tent to level 2. So we're at level one, and we need a thousand dollars and fifty wood to get royal tent number two, which provides access to the map of your current region. Okay, cool. Let's do that. All right, we have access to the regional map where you can open from the main screen. Got it. Uh, workshop itself can also be improved with each subsequent improvement. You gain access to new, stronger units. Oh, awesome. Uh, can we go back in here one more time? Click, click, click. No. Go to command, tent, and view your army. Okay. Uh, here, 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 here. Um, where do I go? Go to the command tent to view your army. Okay. Oh, okay. Over here. In the command tent, you can create units and build your army for avail from available cards. Improving this building will increase your army's recruit cap, allowing you to use stronger units. Uh, yeah, we definitely want that. Alright, so the cards on our left are the ones that are displayed, uh, which we currently have. Okay. All cards available for you to create and place in your deck are displayed on the main screen. Okay. You gain access to new cards by upgrading your training grounds and workshop as well as through certain story related tasks. Okay. Uh, grayed out cards are available but have not been created yet. You must pre create them before you can use them. I mean, that makes sense. Alright. Decks must contain a minimum of 25 cards while not to exceed your army's recruit cap. Okay, so right here we've got 24, we can add one more card. Um, okay, and then our recruit cap sits at 125 points. To create new cards, you need a particular resource. Recruits, you can gain recruits at conscription posts, which are marked with the helmet icon. I think that's where we did that little clicky thing and the banner rolled up, and then we got like eight more of these little dudes. Uh, you receive additional resources to craft a... Wagenberg? Craft one now. Okay. That guy? Oh, so here it says we have three of these, five of those, two of those, and these are ones that we don't have. Um, we don't have Reynard and we don't have... Oh no, well we do. Oh, maybe we only have one. So maybe this will give us two. Damage all units on an enemy row by this unit's armor amount. Then lose all armor. Oh wow. That's kind of cool. So how do I do that? Um, I... Okay. 
All right, so you receive additional resources to craft a card. Craft one now. How do I do that? This isn't a wag... Can I... Oh, it's right here. Add. Recruit. Uh, okay, so these are the cards that we can make. Interesting. So... I guess I, ha I can only create this guy right here. How do I know I can create him, though? Oh, well. Alright, so we already read what it did. Um, Alright, so to recruit it, we need to spend $250. We need to spend two men and 50 wood. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Okay, and then add him to your deck. So I'm guessing it's like that. Ah, uh, okay, cool. So we reached our max. Whew. That was a struggle. Oh, what's up? You can now look at other camp buildings to familiar side. Blah 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 blah. blah. All right, cool. All right, well, I think that's a great way to kind of end it here. We did our first battle. We created a first card, and we don't like Caldwell. He's kind of a brown noser. Other than that, though, everything else is going well, so, uh, cool. Alright, well, when we get back, we will find out what's in here. In here, the mess tent. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. Alright, y'all, catch you later.